All right, just getting a couple more people here joining last minute so I can go join. All right, perfect. I think we've got enough people joining up or connecting in, so we can go ahead and get started um, for today. Um, so, uh, yeah, so I just wanted to thank everybody for, for joining uh, this week's live demo series uh, with Data Theorem. Uh, before I hand it over to our speaker, I just wanted to let everybody know that we will reserve some time at the end of today's presentation for some Q&A. So if you do have any questions, feel free to drop that into the WebEx chat and uh, we'll, we'll make sure to reserve some time at the end for that. Um, with that, I'm going to turn it over to my colleague, uh, Karin, who will be our presenter for today. Karin? Hi, uh, can you hear me? I can hear you. Okay, great. Sorry. So thank you everyone for joining today. Uh, today I'll be talking about how integrated continuous security checks can save your business. Um, it's really important these days to implement a security program as technology evolves. Um, and it also can help you avoid paying millions of dollars in fines. So today I'll talk about how you can avoid this mistake for you and your business, as well as keeping your mobile or web applications secure through preventative hacking and discovery. And I'll also be uh, talking about a, a recent example about a popular social networking app that recently exposed 40 million private user records um, of, of younger people and minors. Uh, so this mistake that they had made could have happened to your team and it could have been easily avoided. So that's what we'll talk about today. So to start, um, let's talk about whether mobile apps really are more vulnerable and why should you even care? So a few different sources indicate that you should care. And so, um, first of all, we can start with International Data Group. Um, they, they frequently run surveys about security and other topics uh, to enterprise owners and IT leaders. And what they found was that 74% of IT leaders actually have experienced a mobile related breach in their organization. So this is very, very common and it's almost always attributed to mobile applications. Um, now, a second statistic here, maybe maybe you have an, an application and you feel that you're doing everything you can to keep it secured. Um, even still, there was a study done by Ohio State University where they found that 8.5% of all mobile apps have backdoor secrets. So um, what they did is they looked at almost all the applications, the top applications in the App Store, they looked at the top uh, 150,000 applications and out of those 150,000 top by like most downloaded or most popular, um, they found that over 12,000 of them contained hidden behaviors within the app. And this could be like something where you're interacting with an app and then your data is being sent to another third party or it could be um, something else, just something that either the app developer doesn't know about and the user doesn't know about either. So you might think that you are being secure or you think you're taking all of the right measures, but then, you know, we're looking at the statistic here and this is almost 10% and it's, it's pretty frequent that you could have something that you don't even know about. And so then we might wonder, well, what is the financial impact of that? Like, let's say you do actually have a breach, what actually happens then, right? And so um, Verizon Data Breach Report has said that uh, the average cost of a data breach in 2020 is $150 million. And so that's an average cost. And of course, it could be higher or lower. And there's a lot of different variables involved. But this is still a lot of money. So um, it could be used to develop your app or for something else. So um, now let's talk about like, why does this actually happen, right? Because um, the expectation is that uh, you're doing everything you can. You're trying to keep your app secure, right? So why is it happening? And so we're, we're looking at the current landscape of the mobile market and there's a lot of competition there's a lot of apps out there a lot of uh, releases and updates are happening very frequently more than ever before and so as an app developer an it leader you're really trying to focus on app features and you're not necessarily putting all of your effort into security not because you don't care about security but because you're really trying to evolve your application and so a lot of times you might use fast and easy security something that maybe you've learned about in the past or you're used to using in your projects and so uh, you're doing that and you're trying to just 
get your next build out the door. And this is really a problem, right? Because it's important in this in this fast evolving tech landscape that you need to stay current to stay secure. And so the question is, how do you actually stay current? How do you keep tabs on everything that's going on in your application, right? And this is what uh, this is probably what happened with Wishbone, uh, which I'll talk about here. Um, this is a um, a serving app for minor, I mean, for, for teenagers. So a majority of their user base is teens and minors. And uh, basically you can just create quick surveys and ask your friends what they prefer. Um, and this happened about a month ago. So this was a big breach. Um, so 40 million customer records were exposed. And what kind of records, right? So you might think, oh, maybe just their name and their password or something like that, but it was, um, it was worse than that, right? It was everything that was associated with their profile. It was their name, their email address, their geolocation, their date of birth, their profile picture. All of this was being posted um, because they had all of this information uh, posted on the dark web and it was being sold for like a fraction of a Bitcoin, right? So, um, and this is putting their clients in, in danger, right? And if you think about the cost associated with it, maybe um, for a year of like identity theft monitoring, we're looking at around $800 million in costs for Wishbone. And you might wonder like, um, what happened? What was the mistake that they made? So they were using outdated security measures. Um, They're using a poor hashing algorithm. Um, so the broker that was dumping the solicit position as SHA-1, but realistically it's actually MD5 that they're using. Um, these are hashing algorithms and I'll go into what that means in a little bit. Um, but these are actually hashing algorithms that the OS is recommend against, but they're still able to publish their app to the store with it. Um, even though the recommendation is not to use it, you, you know, it's nobody's going to stop you. And, um, you know, they probably were just trying to build the app, trying to get it out the door, um, didn't have time to update their hashing algorithms. And this is, this was a repercussion, right? So let's talk about what actually happens um, with passwords in an application, right? So typically you'll sign up, uh, you'll write your password in, and then on the back end, you'll have some hashing algorithm, take that plain text and turn it into a hash of a certain length. And that will be stored in a database. And then every time you log in again, um, you'll type in your password, and it'll, it'll turn into a hash, and then I'll check some that against whatever's in the database every time. And once it says, yes, these are the same, it'll give you the green light to go ahead and log in and get into your user profile. Now, the problem with these hashing algorithms, especially the older ones, is that mathematically they are susceptible to something called a collision attack. And so um, what we expect is that for two different passwords, um, you always get two different hashes. However, um, it is possible to have um, two different passwords actually turn into the same exact hash. And that would give you the green light to go ahead and log in, even though uh, you're not the right user. Um, so authenticate even uh, unjustifiably. So, um, and here we can look at crypto over time. So as you can see, it's been a couple decades now that crypto has been, cryptographic hashes have been around. Um, and so MD5 was only considered strong in 1992 and that's what Wishbone was using, right? So, you know, you might wonder, well, why are they using it? Like maybe, um, they should know that it, there are newer, better ones out there. But uh, the fact is that, you know, when you're used to using a certain hashing algorithm, that's what you're used to using. And uh, over time, you just kind of uh, continue to make these mistakes. So then, um, you know, what actually happens, you, you might wonder, like, how feasible is it to have a collision attack, right? Um, and actually, it's very feasible. Um, it all has to do with brute forcing different attempts and trying to get that other um, password that will turn into the same hash. And so that's really about using the right hardware. And so if you look at the probability, um, the more attempts you have, the more likely it is that you can um, get that same hash and create that collision attack. And really, it's as easy as sometimes getting a full house in poker, or it can be even easier than that. Um, so the bottom line here is that using old encryption, authentication, or hashing algorithms can lead to data breaches and uh, is a very big mistake, but also very easy to avoid. 
And you might wonder, well, is this actually even possible? Like who can actually get the right processors? I mean, today for SHA-1, you can probably solve that in a few seconds um, using some of the modern processors. They actually did this, um, this experiment uh, someone on Twitter did this where they, they're they able to use a GPU and AWS and NVIDIA Tesla V100, and they're able to guess every eight character password for a Windows login in three hours. And so that's, you know, that tells you how easy it is these days to break something like a Windows hash, which is actually considered stronger than both SHA-1 and MD5. It's very, very important here to uh, use the NIST recommended like SHA-3 or SHA-5 uh, that's out there today. So how can data theorem help, right? So uh, first of all, we offer end-to-end -end full stack solutions um, for your security. Um, we actually, uh, for both the client end as well as the cloud side, we are able to scan and make sure that any vulnerabilities are avoided. Um, because in this case with Wishbone, so many records were leaked, um, this actually could have been an API attack. That's not confirmed, but it could have been. And uh, using API Secure, we would have caught that. Uh, for a mobile and website, if you're using a web uh, SPA type application or you have mobile applications, uh, we can definitely uh, scan and find any crypto issues there. Um, and you know we also scan everything that you have in your cloud so if you're using cloud storages we can figure out what's going on there and um how we do this is we have this analyzer engine uh we run discovery processes where we scan all of the app elements um across your across the public web across anything that's in your application we even scan anything in your cloud building blocks so like um, cloud storage buckets databases queues anything like that we check public and private apis and then for the mobile side we check any linked third-party apis open source sdks and libraries and we look at each one and we also run like automated preventative hacking like we'll we'll run like SQL injection attacks or fuzzing attacks to try and see if we can get any uh, PII out of there um, and after we run all these processes which are happening in an automated fashion we can actually remediate where we'll give you suggestions of how you can fix things or what you can do and when it comes to remediation, the ultimate goal is to resolve issues quickly and safely. So, um, you know, you might wonder why aren't, why is everyone doing this? Um, some are trying to do it, but they might be missing a few things. We'll actually tell you uh, what's wrong, who has access, and we'll set up alerts and tell you very quickly um, how to fix it. So uh, if you can see here, we've actually created a mock social networking app that's using um, SHA-1 and MD5. And as you can see right away, we've auto-detected and notified this for you. Um, and so, you know, this is an example of some instances where we're all, we're, we will ID out-of-date hashing algorithms, like any weak out-of-date hashing algorithms, you'll be able to see here. And we can actually go one step further and notify you through like Slack um, or Teams or Jira, depending on what you're using. So um, we're we integrate into your your build pipeline as well and um let's dive into a quick demo here where i'll actually show you what the dashboard looks like so um, here's the dashboard and so first of all i'm i'm now seeing my ios app so you can see social networking app is a name and I can scroll down here and there's actually a few different issues. Um, so typically you'll see maybe like 10 to 15 issues, that's normal, um, but you'll have to fix them. Um, so when it's green, it's been fixed. When it's red, it's still open. And these are the ones that are associated with the poor uh, crypto. So MD5 is here and SHA-1 is here. So let's open one up and see what happens. So this says hash generated using broken crypto API SHA-1. So if I were to open this now, I'm gonna log in again. Okay, so, so it tells me the following code locations within the app use these functions to generate a message digest. So that's MD5 and um, it's calling SHA-1 to do this. Okay. And they're saying 
Th these are vulnerable to collision attacks and are unsuitable for modern use. Now, if I don't know what collision attack is, I can click on this link and it'll open another window and tell me a little bit more about that. Um, it says Apple considers this insecure, and this is directly from the iOS 13 doc documentation where it's telling me this isn't secure. Please use SHA-512. Now I can look at regulatory compliance. It's out of compliance with OWASP. So I know that I'm not compliant with some of these um, policies. And now I can go to my recommendation. It says switch this to use SHA-256 or SHA-512. And this is a recommendation from Data Theorem, recommendation from um, iOS 13 says SHA-512. Okay, so now here is the actual secure code and I can use this. And so this will tell, so here's a comment that tells me, okay, this is how you can change this to SHA-512. And so I can take this and replace it in my code. And so I can quickly fix this. And once I uh, replace it in my code and I update my code and then I scan again, which actually um, our tool will do automatic scanning, um, it'll actually tell me right away if um, it's, green or, or red still. So typically after it's fixed, it should turn to green and it won't be an issue anymore. And so I can easily fix all of these, right? And so that's pretty much it for today. Um, going back here, uh, we can talk a little bit about who we are. So we've been working on our security solution since 2013. Uh, we recently got the Gartner Cool Vendor Award in 2020 for our security product. And uh, if you want any additional information um, or if you have any questions, please post them in the chat. But if you want any more information, you can request a demo or email us. Awesome, Karin. Thank you. So let me, uh, I don't think we've gotten any questions in the chat yet. I'll give everybody a minute or two to, to maybe just post that if you do have one uh, outstanding right now. Um, okay. But as Karin mentioned, <clears throat> well, people might be doing that. Um, you can uh, request a demo if you would like to see a little bit more about, uh, you know, how your apps uh, look and are you using some of these out-of-date methods and how you can get those remediated. We'd be happy to set up a demo and review for you uh, at www.datatherum.com slash demo. Um, and if for whatever reason, uh, you, you think of a question after the fact. Oh, here we go. Uh, we do have one question. Can you share the OWASP number again for broken crypto? So, uh, so I don't know if you caught that, Karin, if you can go uh, back to the portal and share the OWASP number again for the uh, broken crypto. Oh, okay. I believe, it, I believe it's uh, three. Uh, confirm. Uh, M5. M5, five. Yeah. I think M6 is also broken cryptography. So like if I were to open some of these other, um, like this is only one issue. If I were to open one of the other ones, this is M5. Um, yeah, I guess they're all M5, so. All right. A couple, couple questions. So does Google have a similar blocker compared to Apple on the security requirements? Yeah, it does. Um, so for Android 10, they also have the same requirements. And these come directly from NIST. So like every couple of years, NIST will say, hey, we now recommend you use SHA-3 or SHA-2. And so um, the OSs stay compliant with that as well because they're all part of, um, you know, making sure that different uh, companies are staying secure as well. Okay. And we do have uh, one other question. Um, do you integrate or show access to real-time threats as they're happening and any government resources? So um, we can, uh, for real-time, we could do a little bit more of that on kind of our API and some of the other stuff, uh, some of the other parts of the stack that Karin mentioned. Um, for mobile, obviously, we're doing analysis of your app, you know, as it's running. Um, so the results are, are pretty pretty instantaneously. Uh, we come back with a lot of this usually generated within a few minutes. Yeah, and, and um, you so we can, can we can definitely do that analysis. Yeah, you can set up your um, your scans to be daily or even more frequent than that, and so that would be pretty close to real time. Yeah, um, and uh, we do have some uh, additional resources which we can uh, we can definitely send out to you as well. Perfect. I think. Corin, I think that so far is all the questions we have, but like I mentioned, if anybody has any other questions, feel free to uh, 
reach out to knowledge at datatheorem.com and we'll be happy to uh, get you an answer for that. Okay. Perfect. Well, thank you everyone for, for joining this week and, uh, and uh, we're excited to hopefully have you join us for future live demos with Data Theorem. Thank you. Thank you everyone.